Do you want to improve clay soil in your garden, but you don't know where to start? You came to the right place, because in this video we'll be testing three different amendments to improve clay soil, and we'll see which one is the best. One of my goals for my small garden is to improve the clay soil that I have. I don't like the poor drainage, nor that if it's left on the hot sun, it will harden like a rock. One option would be to swap all the soil with some store-bought soil, but because the clay soil has a lot of nutrients trapped inside, and because it can retain moisture well, I don't want to lose it. So I decided to make some tests to see what is the best way to improve the clay soil in the vegetable garden that I have. But I found out many conflicting information on the topic. So I asked Greg, my buddy from the YouTube channel Some Room to Grow, to help me choose what amendments I should test. He has a small garden, which is also under the influence of some heavy clay soil. And we are joining forces this episode to tackle once and for all the problem of the clay soil in our gardens. We found out that all the information is pointing to three main solutions. But there are also some information that adding some of them to your soil might be bad. And that's why I need to test and see which can work. So without further ado, let's start the test with sand, gypsum and compost. I designed a test to see which one have better drainage, moisture absorption, moisture retention and compactness when dried against my clay soil. For that I needed the same environment for all the samples. So the first step was to collect some clay soil and mix it well, so the end result would be a homogeneous mixture that we can use in all the variation of the test and we can have a uniform baseline. And to do all the tests that I wanted, I needed to make some holes in the buckets. That way I would allow drainage for all the water that will be used. Now the fun part, mixing the amendments with the clay soil. I found out that you can use up to 25 pounds of gypsum per 5 square feet. So this is what I used in my test. I divide the amount of gypsum by 5 because the surface area of my bucket is just around 1 square feet. The gypsum is supposed to accumulate clay particles around it, thus forming some sort of clumps preventing clay compactness. Sand is the second amendment I wanted to try. I heard many things about it, from one side that it helps soil drainage and compactness, to the other side that sand and clay will form a concrete-like mixture that is even harder than clay itself. We'll see. Right now, it looks great. And finally one amendment that every gardener should have in their garden. A half decomposed compost with some organic pieces in it. Those organic pieces should act like a sponge, absorbing the water and also inhibiting soil compactness. Also with the compost, the soil changes to a nice dark color. The last sample that we want to test is the control. In other words, only the clay soil that we used. We want to see if there are any changes between this and all the other samples, because otherwise all the work amending our soil is for nothing. First, we'll be testing soil drainage, and for that I need to soak my samples with 2.5 gallons of water, and see which will drain the best. I admit, I was surprised how fast the clay soil drained all the water. Maybe this is due to the fact that I break it apart before the test, so probably the soil was loose and full of air gaps allowing the water to fully drain in two and a half minutes. Next to receive the shower was the mixture of gypsum and clay soil. And as you can see the white color of gypsum persisted and it wasn't washed away deeply into the mix, or completely out of the bucket, so the store that gypsum sticks to the clay could be real. But the drainage was actually worse than the original clay soil. It took just a few seconds shy from 6 minutes to drain all the water from the bucket. Maybe this happens only the first time because I didn't allow the clay soil to compact and harden, but we'll see. One other possibility is that the fine gypsum powder clogged up all the little air pockets, stopping the water from draining well. We'll see if this phenomena persists when we'll be testing the sand mixture. I didn't think that it could get worse, but it did. With the sand I assume all the little pores were clogged, because after 5 minutes the bucket was still full. And I needed to stop the test because I didn't have time all night to stand there and wait. So I emptied the bucket and continued to my final contestant. If I could bet, I would say that this would perform the best. But boy oh boy I was wrong. It wasn't the worst 
Actually, it was better than sand and gypsum, but a good 5 minutes is far from impressive. I assume this is because the water was slowly absorbed into all the organic pieces into the compost mix. If I'm right, the moisture retention here will be stellar. We'll see later on how the moisture retention test will go. After this first phase, I placed the samples under the roof, but exposed them to the sun to give them some time to dry. That way I will see if some samples are getting harder, and I think this is a good simulation of real life scenario, when you have periods of rains and periods of dry weather. What do you think? After one week I did the first check, and here's where the first differences in soil compactness appeared. I checked all four of them, and watched for moisture retention and soil compactness. Gypsum clamped well the clay soil, giving it a loose structure that retained moisture pretty good. The sand mixture looked compact, but under the thin top layer I found a moist sandy soil that was nice and loose. As you can see the compost looked dried, but fortunately it was only the top layer. All the rest was nicely soft and moist. Zero clumps here. Overall, a good result. I could say that they are all still in the game, but unfortunately, life is not measured in one week periods. So after two weeks, it was time to test the water retention. This was done by checking how much water will the soil retain after I pour three quarters of a gallon in it. As you can see, clay soil and clay soil amended with compost have almost the same water retention properties, followed by gypsum and at the end, clay soil amended with sand. So from here you can see that if you have problems with ponds forming after heavy showers, it's not recommended to use sand, because instead of fixing the problem, you're actually worsening it. After this test, I left the samples again under the roof for another 3 weeks, so they have time to dry out completely to see how well the moisture tension in the soil is. In other words, how fast the soil will get dry after you water your plants. So here is what I found in my buckets after leaving my soil in them for 5 weeks. As you can see, a good third of clay soil sample is still moist, but the main issue is the top crust. This is hard and would probably prevent a good root formation. As you can see, I need to apply quite a bit of force to break it. The bottom layer that stayed moist after those 3 weeks crumbled quite easily, but the soil is not soft like I would like it to be. This means that if you have clay soil in your garden and you would left it to dry, it will harden like a rock. And if you don't crumble the top crust right away, you can say goodbye to your plants. The next sample I tested is the mixture of clay soil with sand. Here I can see that a lot of sand particles have roamed to the bottom, and my big concern here is that after time you would have a sandy layer at the bottom and a clay layer at the top. And with it, you'll probably have dry roots and wet stems, prone for molding, a worst case scenario. As you can see, also this mixture has a little bit of moisture in the bottom half, but the top half is bone dry. This top crust is even worse than the clay soil. I can imagine how hard it would be to break it in the summer. The bottom part on the other hand is I would like imagine a sandy soil. It breaks apart easily with a gentle force. The third sample is the mixture with gypsum. I was surprised that after all this watering, the gypsum is still here and coloring the mixture with a white color. And also I was impressed how the soil crumbled under my fingers. It's really doing something. But as you can see the moisture tension here is not so great. But the top crust is not so hard to break either. So you have some advantages and disadvantages. I would say that if you could add something that would retain moisture, adding gypsum, maybe is not such a bad idea. Maybe. If you would like to hear if gypsum has any effects on soil pH or nutrients availability, go check Greg's video after this to learn more about it. Link will be in the description. Last but not least was the clay and compost mixture. And look at this color. After 3 weeks in the hot summer sun, this mixture is still completely moist. Probably it retained much of its water and the soil is soft and easily breaking apart. 
The perfect texture, if you ask me. I think I don't need to say more about it, because you already see that adding compost to your clay soil will do wonders. But if you don't have that much of compost, adding some gypsum that will break apart the heavy clay soil with the combination of some compost that will retain moisture maybe it would be the best for you. I hope you find this video informative and that you learn how you can improve your clay soil by adding different amendments. After seeing all those results, I wouldn't suggest adding sand to your garden soil and I would strongly suggest to add compost to your clay soil. But like I said, if you don't have that much compost, adding some gypsum and some compost would be a good compromise. Now pop on the Greg's channel to see what the amendment can do to your soil pH and soil nutrients. Or if you don't have your compost yet, you can watch the video on the screen on 8 starting tips to make a perfect compost. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe.